Hi guys, welcome to another video. Hope you're all keeping well. Now for this video, I'd like to review a, a movie uh, that I watched uh, last night. It's not a horror movie. Uh, it's a British uh, crime thriller from the 1950s and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It stars uh, Michael Craig and Diana Dawes and that movie is called Yield to the Night. Now, um, as per usual, before I say anything further about the movie and give him your thoughts on the story as a whole, I'll just read you the blurb at the back just to give an idea if you haven't seen it. Okay. So this is a stunning new restoration of J. Lee Thompson's 1956 drama, Yield to the Night, starring Diana Dawes in one of her most powerful roles as Mary Hilton, who, after being convic convicted of murder and, sent and sentenced to hang, spends her final weeks in a condemned cell remembering the events that led to her crime. Now, she, fought, she, she fell hopelessly in love with impoverished musician Jim Lancaster, played by Michael Craig, and left her neglectful husband for him, only to find this attraction to her, defle to her deflected by his involvement with rich socialite Lucy Carpenter, Mercia Shaw. When Jim's relationship with Lucy takes a tragic turn, Mary is heartbroken and snaps, transforming her love for him into a mere hated for her rival. Yeah. All right then, guys. So that's the uh, synopsis for the uh, this 1956. British crime, air thriller, eight years to the night. Okay then guys, so on to my thoughts now on the movie as a whole. Oh yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. Diana Dawes gives an excellent performance as this uh, woman condemned condemned to death, you know, after uh, shooting uh, 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 the rival lover, you know, um, and she basically just guns the woman down in cold blood uh, so that the story starts with a real bang. Um, yeah, as I say, Diana gives a really, um, you know, harrowing, uh, harrowing performance uh, as this uh, condemned woman, you know, uh, and um, it's interspersed with... Um, it's mainly set in, in the prison, you know, but it's interspersed with flashbacks because, like, uh, the, the character sort of, like, uh, relates uh, all the events that led up to her being incarcerated and sentenced to death. Uh, oh, yeah, very, very well done, you know, uh, and I think this is the best... I think this is one of the... Well, it, it, one of the best... Uh, prison uh, women in prison movies i've ever seen you know and i highly recommend it if you, if you haven't seen it uh, and uh, oh yeah a uh, very very tense very dark uh, at times quite disturbing and diana Dawes, she should have got an, an oscar you know for playing this uh, condemned uh, uh, killer you know uh, mary hilson you know um oh yeah uh, this is a lovely edition this guy's a uh, vintage classic there's no reverse of work work it's just the uh, the saying there yeah and it's got some special features at the back there including uh, interviews and that and the, the movie premiere but but yeah this uh, it's a real crime of passion this guy's you know as i say she's absolutely mad on michael craig you know and um i like the way it starts off like she's uh you know well basically after she, she's gone the woman down on the streets it just goes back further to that where she's working on a perfume counter down at doors and you know when we first me says she looks a real a nice girl you know respectable um nice girl you know saving a perfume and that you know uh, but of course once she sets eyes on michael craig you know that's it she goes downhill and as of course she ends up in in prison and that you know uh, but oh yeah very very well done british air british air prison movie from the 1950s and uh, oh yeah had me hooked from start to finish because running through the story there's a chance that she might be reprieved, you know, uh, at the very last minute. Because you get, like, people visiting that, visiting that in a prison cell and saying, like, uh, the mother, for instance, so we've written to the Home Secretary, there might be a chance of a reprieve, but it's looking very, very grim. I won't give away the ending, guys, you know. Um, I'll let you see the movie yourselves, but it's, it looks very, very grim for, for this character, Mary, throughout the whole movie. And it's really it really captures the, the atmosphere, the ambience of being incarcerated in a British prison in the 1950s, you know. She's got, like, a kind of a love-hate relationship with the guards as well because one minute they're sort of like authoritative with her you know and it are bossing her around and the next minute they seem to display some sympathy towards her you know uh, knowing that she could be going to going to the death going to the death cell you know um oh yeah so many many memorable moments in this movie guys and uh, yeah very well done lovely cinematography the black and white reproduction you know doing a real good job at the transfer and diana Dawes. i think i'd even go as far as to say this is a, a best movie you know uh, i know prior to she, uh, making this movie she was known for a glamour girl a glamour girl rose wasn't she you know a glamour girl rose like she was our marilyn monroe basically uh, but oh yeah it's a pity she didn't make any more drama movies right after this you know it, oh she's fantastic in it you know and it, you really the expressions on her face and that you know when she's in prison and that she gets moody uh you know and she's sort of like she's just basically like you're basically terrified of, of getting hung basically you know and she's hoping and hoping and hoping right through the movie there'll be a last minute reprieve and that's that's sort of like that that really uh as i say it's a plot device well 
uh, writers have used it time and time again. It's, it's what you call the ticking the ticking clock plot device. And by that, I mean, it's like a certain, like, for instance, in this one, you know, it, the, the time's ticking away. She's writing on the calendar, crossing her days out when she's going to be, you know, executed. So it's, a, it's what, as I say, it's what you call a ticking clock, the ticking clock narrative, you know, because you don't know if she's going to be reprieved and that, you know. Uh, and it's a very, very powerful plot device, the ticking clock device. And uh, so, as I say, very, very well done movie. And there's one particular warder here who she forms like a kind of a, a bond with her, with her Mary, you know, while she's in a cell and that, you know, and she sort of like basically comforts her now and again when, when Mary gets upset and that she shows that anxiety and fear of the approaching time when she's going to be <coughs> marched down to the hanging cell and basically just executed, you know, oh yeah, this is definitely, uh, if you love, if you love uh, women in prison movies, guys, I highly recommend this, Yield to the Night, it's a fantastic movie, I was not bored, what, for one single second watching this, uh, and Diana Dawes, oh, I could sit here all afternoon, I'm a, I am a Diana Dawes fan, I am a Diana Dawes fan anyway, I've always loved her, always loved the movies and that, and uh, you know, uh, oh yeah, I think she's a fantastic actress, Diana Dawes and that, and very, very, oh, when she was young, ooh, ooh, my word, she had an hourglass figure and the looks, and no wonder they called, no wonder they called her uh, our answer to Manuel Munro, she certainly was, but she's really, you know, in this, she's really serious and that, you know, she's really, oh, it's a very, very gritty movie, this guy, Yield to the Night, you know, and the whole sort of like, uh, the, the love triangle thing, you know, between Michael Craig and the other woman and that, and Diana Dawes and that, you know, and, uh, oh yeah, something very, about halfway through, I won't give away anything, I won't give away anything, uh, you know, because, uh, you know, in case you haven't seen it, but about just over halfway through the movie, you get like a pivotal moment that sort of like really throws the story up in the air, but I won't tell you what that pivot, pivotal moment is, you know, it's quite shocking, so I'll let you, I'll let you see the movie, well, if you've seen the movie yourself, you know, you'll know what I mean about that pivotal moments, you know, when things really start to, you know, really start to hot up and that, but, uh, oh yeah, and another thing this movie does, guys, as well, it raises the whole arguments, you know, for capital punishments, because, even though, even though you know Diana, the Diana, Diana Dawes character is a cold-blooded killer, the, the, it's written so that like her, um, you start, you know, she she exhibits that much like her uh, fear and you know sort of like emotion and that. Uh, even the warders, you, you start feeling a little, a little degree of even sympathy for her that she's going to be something horrible is going to happen to her. But having said that, you've got to remember she she shot a woman down in cold blood, so she's basically deserved. You know, she's um, she's getting a just desert really. But the way the movie's done is so cleverly done. The emotion and that, you know, and the character, the character paint, and you know, the character developments, you know, it actually elicits some some degree of sympathy, not much mind, but some degree of sympathy, knowing that the you know uh, she's going to go to to the, the gallows. Yeah. And you feel a fear as well, you know. Uh, oh yeah, it's, it's a really powerful movie. This guys, as I say, if you love if you love females in prison movies, uh, I think you will enjoy this one. Yield to the night. It's a cracking movie, and I'm going to keep it in my collection. You know. Oh yeah. Um. It really, as I say, it really has you thinking. There's so many themes running running through this movie. You know. As I say, the love triangle. Uh. You know. Capital punishments. Uh. Character developments. And what it actually what it actually feel like being a murderer and put in prison, you know, oh, all these themes are running through it and that, you know, and, uh, oh, yeah, it's really gritty, dark movie, Yields to the Nice, and uh, Diana Dawes is really on the money playing this convicted killer, you know, uh, Mary Hilson and that, and uh, as, as it's Michael Craig, you know, uh, playing her loving and that, you know, and as I say, you know, it's uh, the perfect sort of, like, uh, love triangle uh, murder, mo murder movie, you know, so, uh, oh, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it, yeah. And um, yeah, it's it's it, it, very very clever the way they've done it. You know, um, as I say, she starts off like a, a nice. You think she's a nice, respectable girl. Well, of course she is really up until the part when she meets uh, Michael Craig, and of course her emotions sort of like run riot basically, ending up in the tragic events at the beginning of the movie where she guns that woman down in the streets, you know, cold bloodedly. But oh yeah, a real punch in your face movie. This is guys, you know, and it's so realistic as well. You know the way they've done they've done the prison ambience and the guards and that. And uh, I, I like the parts as well where, um, well, to, to sort of like alleviate the board and the guards sort of like, the, they, they, they play like card games and that, and chess, and uh, one of them tries to uh, uh, teach uh, uh, Mary how to play chess, and at first she's all for it, but then she starts thinking, oh, what's the point of learning bloody chess if I could be executed at the end, my life's going to be over in a few weeks, so you've got that, and she sort of like, she kicks, the, she, you know, she loses her temper, and she kicks the chess board all over the all over the prison cell and that, you know, oh yeah, she has, she has, um, like, quite sort of, like, striking emotional outbursts and that, you know, while she's, the whole time, while she's incarcerated, but as I say, I love the way they've done the flashbacks, because if you've been watching my videos, you'll know, I'm not normally a big fan of flashbacks, but the way they sort of, like, wove the flashbacks into this movie, 
uh, you know, Dawes' voiceover telling the story. It was very, very well done. You know, so when flashbacks are well done, they're very well neatly interspersed with the main the main narrative. You know, I don't mind flashbacks. And as I say, this is one of the pleasing exceptions where a flashback was very well done because the characters were that good. They were that engrossing. You know, they really, they really held your attention. Uh, the flashbacks worked to a T, guys. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, guys, I'm going to move on to a rating now uh, for eight years of the night. No question whatsoever. I'm going to give this a full 10 out of 10. It's a fantastic movie. I think it's actually, as I say, it even goes as far as to say, it's Diana Dawes' best dramatic role, you know, because she's absolutely fantastic in it, you know, and I bet you when it first came out, everybody was gobsmacked, and I, as I say, up until that point, she was billed as a glamour girl, wasn't she a blonde and that, but when she got her first dramatic role in this movie, my, oh my days, does she pull off a great performance, she really does, you know, a fantastic actress, and I'm very, very sadly missed to this day, yeah, yeah, so a full 10 out of 10 for this, guys, heels of the nice ear. Great, um, a great uh, women in prisons movie and very, very dark, serious, you know, and uh, oh yeah, and uh, fantastic, yeah. And even the guy who plays the um, the, the priest and that in the prison, he, uh, um, he's but he was in um, he was in Taste of Blood of Dracula, um, I think his name's Jeffrey Keen, he's very good in it as well, and that you know, and like when she gets visited, like a, a, a husband comes to visit her and she's just she's not really bothered and that she's a bit dismissive and that, so you're getting all these things and that you know, she's just like basically losing losing hope, really. The longer she's in prison and the nearer and nearer the day, the day of her, her execution is coming, she's losing hope and but she's hoping for this reprieve and. When the warden's coming down the corridor, the footsteps and that, you're actually, you know, you're actually, uh, she, Diana Dawes is that good at, at, at putting over the role. You're actually experiencing the warden coming down because Diana Dawes knows she's going to give her the verdict, is she going to be reprieved or not? And the footsteps are like, the, you know, she's all nervous and that, you know, and she's sort of like, she doesn't really want to know the results, but at the same time, she does, if you know what I mean. You know, she's hoping, hoping against hope, really, basically, um, for a reprieve and that, but I won't tell you what happens at the end, you'll have to watch the movie for yourself. Oh, yeah, great use of the ticking clock device, guys, in this movie. And as I say, the way she describes it, and, you know, um, as it gets nearer and nearer, the day for her to die, be executed, march down to the hanging cell. You know, she starts noticing her emotions are really at the peak and she starts noticing every little detail in the prison and that, you know, um, you know, the bricks and that, anything on the walls, you know, anything, what the what the wards are doing, every little detail, because her senses have become sort of like, uh, well, weirdly attuned to every little noise, every little uh, visual aspect and that. Oh, yeah, very, very cleverly done movie, this guy's, I'm telling you. You know, if you love your prison, your females in prison movies, I think you will get a lot of... Um, a lot of pleasure out of Yields of the Night. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And, you know, Diana Dawes, I can't praise her enough for playing this, um, you know, Glamour Girl 10, Cold Blooded Killer. Yeah. All right, then, guys, that's my review of uh, Yields of the Night from 1956. Yeah. Classic British, a uh, classic British uh, crime movie. Have you seen Yields of the Night? What did you think of it? Do you share my thoughts that it's a very, very dark and disturbing and uh, engrossing movie? Yeah. Leave your comments down below. I'd be very interested, uh, you know, to uh, hear what you thought of it. But this is a great addition, this by. Uh, Vintage classics and that, yeah, very, very fine label, and uh, I'm definitely keeping this in my collection, uh, and oh yeah, great performances all around, great story, you know, held your attention from start to finish, and beautiful, beautiful, beautiful cinematography, even though it wasn't black and white, uh, but I must warn you guys, when you first start, when you first start to watch it, when you see Diana, Diana Dawes walking through the streets, the screen is very, very sort of like, it's very sort of like, pushed in, so uh, we thought like it was going to be like that right through the movie because you know you can you know, you can only see a little bit of the screen, but as the movie opens, it, it widens out. You know, it doesn't go really wide that it covers the screen, but it, it does widen out to the normal like TV ratio. So um, so you know, stay with it. Don't sort of like put off and say, oh, this is it. It's going to be like this all the way through. You know, it's only in the opening scenes and that great shots of London as well. Where, where Diana Dawes is walking through London with a, with, a, with a Mac on and that, you know, and she's got that look in her eyes, that cold-blooded look, and she's got the gun and that. Oh, it's a great movie, this, guys. It really is. Fantastic, yeah? Yeah. All right, then, guys, that's it. That concludes my review of Yields of the Night, starring the late, great Diana Dawes, yeah? Okay, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, usual, you know, um, it, it, you know, like, you know, please feel free to share, subscribe, comment, and uh, all going well. Uh, I'll talk to you again very, very soon. Have a nice weekend. Bye for now.